Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and unique spaces. Today we're traveling to London, England. Well, no, not really. We're going to Portland, Oregon, but it may feel like we're across the pond because we're taking a tour of a double-decker bus from Great Britain that's been transformed into a unique backyard tiny home. The man behind the project is gonna explain the origins of the bus and why he's making it into a super cool Airbnb in his backyard. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new unique tour. Hi, I'm Wit. This is the Royal Scott, and I'm excited to show you around. The Royal Scott is a 1953 28 foot double decker bus that used to be a commuter bus in Manchester, in the United Kingdom, until the 80s. She went to San Francisco for a few years before going to Mount St. Helens to become a tour bus. In the late 80s, her engine caught fire. I like to imagine that it was the eruption of St. Helens, but I don't think the timing lines up. Somebody at that point bought her, said they were gonna fix up the engine, but then ended up having a couple kids and turned it into a jungle gym in their backyard. In the early 2000s, Matt bought it and turned it into the Grilled Cheese Grill, where she sat for about nine years as a successful business. The grilled cheese grill was pretty well known here in town and so as I've been building it people will stop and get out of their car and tell me stories about going to the grilled cheese grill. They also want to know what's happening with it if I was turning it into a food cart myself and they like that it's getting a new life and that it's still here in Portland so it's kind of a cool end to the story or next chapter for the bus. You'll notice the grilled cheese grill sign up there. I kept the original and eight years later I bought it and now it's here a vacation rental. The driver would have sat over on this side. You can see that the front is split. I'm not exactly sure why they did that. All right, we're looking at the entrance to the cab, to the driver's seat. The window broke during a brawl during a Manchester United game in the 80s. Just kidding, I have no idea how that broke. I got it that way. It took me a little while to realize that it opens sliding, not pushing. We've got a couple steps to get us in. Come along. Toot toot. I found the double-decker bus on Craigslist for $8,000. When I got the bus, it was 70 years old, you know, pretty beat up, covered in dust. As you can tell, everything here is original. It's not completely cleaned out, just kind of dusted. There's like a cool window here. There's random old stop signs and old typeface and uh, the window to look back at where all the passengers would have been it does not drive. The cool thing is the tires still move. All right, I'm gonna pop out and I'll show you the back. As you can see, we've got this sort of classic red and white color that we chose to paint it. When we got the Royal Scott, it was brown and had a lot of work that needed to be done to it. So we sanded it down tried to patch up all the little holes that we could find, all the windows leaked. So we had to come by, tear off all the old caulk, put on new builder's caulk around the windows. So this is a tiny house on wheels. It needs power, it needs water. So we've got our plug-in, which plugs directly to the side of my house. It's connected to my electrical. It also has uh, water over here, which is also connected directly to my house. So we've got water coming in directly to a water heater in there electrical going into a breaker box. And out here is the backyard for our rental guests, just set up as a little patio. Here it is, the British passenger side. We've got our entranceway over here, 
and this deck was just built by my dad and myself just a week ago. Old pictures show me that this entryway, it used to be open, so this would drive up to the bus stop and people would kind of hop on while it was still rolling. Matt, the owner of the Grilled Cheese Grill, put in this door. Come on in. Here we are on the inside. We had a wall that came up with a window and people would have entered the bus and walked through this hallway. We had this idea to take out the floor right here so you can stand up in the kitchen without bumping your head. Behind me, you can see this beautiful artwork kind of goes throughout the bus, but this was put in when the bus used to be the grilled cheese grill. And when I found this bus, I knew that it was something that I was absolutely gonna keep. So. I cleaned it all off, protected it with polyurethane spray, and touched it up. When designing this place, I knew that I wanted an area that you could sit on a nice cushion, and I just loved the idea of a nook, two people being able to sit together, face each other, and have a conversation with maybe a cup of coffee or a beer. The other cool thing is that this bench is built right over the wheel well. The wheels on this bus are big. They come up here, um, so we had to build this whole bench over it. And then on this side, the reason why there aren't cabinets and everything over on the kitchen is because it's covering the wheel well. So everything's kind of designed around things that are permanent in the bus. Over here, we've got the kitchen. This is a countertop from Ikea. They make a longer one, but I couldn't fit it in my car. And I happen to have these extra scraps of butcher block. So I bookended the countertop and I think it turned out nice. In the kitchenette over here, we have a induction cooktop with our tea kettle, our toaster, and down below our microwave, pretty simple setup. We've got our dishes and our bowls, our plates, our glasses, our silverware. And down below, we've got our little cute white Black & Decker refrigerator. I knew from the beginning I wanted this place to be filled with plants. So when we knew that this concept of an open kitchen was gonna be here, I instantly knew that there would be a couple shelves, it would be filled with plants. This light is just an impulse buy. It was an inexpensive light that I really, really liked. I knew that the brass would match the brass faucet. We've got little touches of brass and black throughout the whole build. All right, let me take you to the bathroom. We had to put in this wall and decide how big the doorway was gonna be. My dad built this door. It's quite cool. This design is kind of based off of being in a sailboat. It's pretty skinny and honestly, I didn't think about how big the toilet was and getting it in and out. We have a nature's head toilet. In the bathroom on the passenger side, I've got a full shower, fully tiled subway tiles, dark grout. Small house, small bathroom, small sink. This is a super tiny sink. I really like it. It's cute, doesn't take up much space. It's built into a live edge piece of walnut that I've had for the last five years, just trying to figure out what to do with. It fit perfectly, so I put it in and just had to notch out some edges to make it kind of flow in towards the shower. You'll notice the switches in the bathroom. It's a cool connection to the past. Just old switches that used to operate something in the bus. I don't know what, but now they will operate little lights and trinkets inside the cab when I finish. Let me take you up this awesome spiral staircase. The very first thing we did after gutting everything was we started to put up the studs in the ceiling and then insulate the ceiling. We had a lot of leaks in that first month and so there was a lot of patching the ceiling, painting the rooftop. The ceiling is local cedar hand stained every single piece and then polyurethaned everything in place. 
you can see some of the detail work we had to put in. Basically, there are seams where pieces of wood weren't long enough, so we needed to cover the seams. So we came up with this idea of putting pieces of trim in, and then the question was, how do we bend the trim? And our best idea was making these tiny little blocks and bending them down the curve of the bus. We used MDF uh, that's salvaged from a local Portland door shop and sort of classed everything up by making it board and batten with the trim pieces. There are a lot of windows in this bus and buying curtains or even having somebody else make curtains is an expensive proposition. So we came up with this idea of hanging up a little piece of metal, have S hooks. Uh, this is actually wire that was advertised for holding up light string lights outside. And this is a queen size bed. Back of the bed has this little headboard. This is wood that I got from a friend's property, the live edge piece. It just boxes out the very end here to sort of give a headboard. The bed was its full length. There was a little bit of gap left, so we created this headboard. Additionally, the cedar ceiling that we had, I ran out of paneling and just didn't have any more wood and had to come up with a solution for the last fifth or sixth of the bus. And so I got fencing panels that I had and cut it into this design, ran some wires, hung up some lights, I think it turned out nice. This section over here, I imagine just being an area that you might sit down and hang out. Eventually the idea is that we will hang a projector around here and there will be a screen on the other side. You can throw your pillows around here, hang out and watch a movie in this space. When all is said and done, it probably came out to 22,000. I had to be pretty frugal with a lot of material to not go above that price. Somebody who's watching this video and is hoping that one day they can build their own tiny house or their own bus, you can. People say on Instagram and TikTok to me all the time, like, I want this to be my life, is literally what some people say. and. My response is, this is your life, <laughs> and you need to decide what you wanna do with it. The way I got into tiny house building was I got a little bit tired of sitting behind a computer all day. Life is way better now that I'm doing something that I'm passionate about. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.